Regular followers of the channel will know that I'm a big fan of Portuguese reds. Most of them come from the Lisbon area or from the Douro Valley up in the north. But the red I have for you today is from the Dow. Hmm, never heard of it, eh? Stay tuned, all will be revealed. A Dow red coming right up. Hi guys, welcome to yet another edition of Big On Wine, the show which, uh, as you may well know by now, attempts to bring you news, clues and reviews. Indeed, we seek to keep you up to speed with just about everything that's happening in the world of wine. And yes, this week we're back in Portugal and we're in the Dow region and my wine of the week is this one here. It goes under the name of Porta dos Cavalheiros and the vintage is 2013. And this wine comes in for a price of just under 15 euro a bottle where I am. Okay, let's see whether we can take a look at the name and where this wine is from. Porta dos Cavaleros. Now I can't say that the Portuguese language is my strong point, but if I had to take a guess, and uh, also the label on the bottle gives a fairly good picture of what's involved here. Uh, it probably means gateway of the horsemen, Porta dos Cavalieros. Okay, now this is 2013 vintage, so it's been uh, aging for seven years. Um, this is a red wine, um, which is a blend of three different varieties. And those three different varieties are absolutely typical Portuguese varieties, the Turiga Nacional, the Alfrojero, and of course the Tempranillo, Tempranillo naturally being the big red grape of Rioja over in Spain, further east. So a very, very traditional blend of three big grape varieties. Now this wine is officially DOC Dow. And the Dow wine region is east of the city of Aveiro. Aveiro is on the Atlantic coast and it's in central Portugal. And the producer of this wine is Caves Sao João. And Caves Sao João are based in Sao João da Asenja. Senza. Hope I got that right. I'm sure people will write in and tell me if I didn't. Uh, which is situated roughly 30 kilometers or so southeast of Aveiro. So we're talking about central Portugal here, back off the coast. All right, now the blend we've already mentioned, the Turiga Nacional, Alfrojero and Tempranillo, nothing new there in terms of the blend, but uh, generally speaking, the combination produces a very nice red wine. And in the Dow in particular, the wine is characteristically a lovely soft velvety uh, texture. All right. That's the backstory. Let's turn our attention to the wine itself. Take a look at the wine in the glass. And as we can see here, the wine in the glass has that wonderful dark ruby colour which we associate and also that lack of translucence which we can very, very quickly associate with the wines of Portugal. We've seen this so many times on the channel, this kind of wine. All right, so it ticks all the boxes in that sense. Let's turn our attention to the nose on the wine and take a sniff, see whether we can isolate some of those uh, aromas. All right, now on the wine here, we're getting a rather um, intense. And um, I think we can tell that the wine has been aged for a while there, doesn't the aroma is not that of a uh, young wine at all. We're getting a rather intense, um, oaky, um, fruity, but they're very, 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 um, I think almost like dried fruit aromas coming off this wine here. Um, blackberry, cherry, sour cherry, I think is in the mix. Um, maybe even, maybe even a little touch of licorice or something in the background as well. A very entertaining, interesting nose on this wine. Definitely the uh, aging of the wine here uh, has done its job. 
Okay, so far so good. Let's now try the wine in the mouth and see how we get on, what kind of flavours we can establish on this wine. Here we go. Right, first impressions, full-bodied wine, as we would expect from a blend of this nature. It's tannic. It's something, I think, which is going to be extremely good with food, particularly with um, dark meat, I think. All right, in terms of flavours, well, I think, um, first of all, we're getting some darker fruit coming to the fore now. I would be looking at blackberry, blueberry, in terms of flavours here. The, um, it, the wine has been in oak, but certainly it is by no means over-oaked. The oakiness is there in the background. But generally speaking, the finish on the wine is, it's tannic, but it's relatively soft at the same time. Now, this does have one gram per litre of residual sugar. So there's a little touch of softness in there as well. So let's pull all this together. It's full bodied, it's tannic. It's got those blackberry, blueberry flavours in there. Touch of sour cherry in the mix as well. Maybe a little dried fruit, figs maybe. Um, hint of black pepper and a relatively soft finish on the wine. This is a red wine, which I think will be to many people's liking. And this is one you could even try on your Christmas table if you're serving dark meat, for example. Now, serving temperature for this wine is probably in the region of 16 or 17 degrees. So make sure you put the bottle in the fridge for at least half an hour before you serve it. And it might even be a good idea to open the wine half an hour or so in advance. How are we going to enjoy this wine? Well, I think dark meat is called for, so beef or lamb, uh, preferably grilled or roasted, I think. Why not elk or venison too? This would handle uh, game uh, quite nicely, I think. Oily fish as well, uh, mackerel, sardines, typical, of course, in Portugal would work too, plus those soft cheeses. So, You've got a pretty good uh, match here in terms of food. A whole variety of stuff would be suitable. Let's bring you the heads up on this one. This is a big oak-aged red from uh, Portugal's not-so-trendy Dao region in central Portugal. It's a very, very similar recipe in terms of the grape blend to elsewhere in Portugal. We've got blackberry and spice, dark colour and character. This is lovely for winter meat dishes. Seven years of ageing, uh, perfect for drinking now, and available at a very, very acceptable price. Porta dos Cavaleiros, four stars out of five. Okay, folks, many, many thanks for tuning in and checking out this week's video. And of course, this was a little introduction to uh, a big red from uh, Portugal's uh, central region there, uh, the Dao. Porta dos Cavaleros. Nice stuff, indeed. Okay, if you've enjoyed what you've seen and heard, then please do feel free to give us a big thumbs up. Yeah, give us a like. We do enjoy getting those. Drop a comment down below if you feel that way inclined. Share the video around. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do consider doing so. And while you're about it, why not hit that little bell icon down below and you'll be informed as soon as every new video is uploaded. And naturally, I'll be back again next week with another great wine of the week for you. But uh, until we meet again, this is Tony Melville signing off and saying, hey, take care out there, be good to each other, enjoy your wines, and cheers.